Hey guys, welcome back for another video. So today I'm gonna to be trying to tackle what should be, hopefully, a very simple project. I've got a small problem here with this particular watch. It's a dirt cheap, seriously, almost free watch. You can pick these up 50, 60, 70 bucks all day, depending on the coupon and the sale going on. It's a very basic, bare bones, Chinese movement from Pagani Design, but I bought it just because, number one, it looks cool. You know, it just looks cool. It looks like a nice movement. It's a skeletonized design and it's dirt cheap. Who cares? I didn't even care if I wore it that much. It just looks cool sitting in my display boxes, right? So picked it up. But then I very quickly found out that I can't wear it. And it's not because of fit or finish or anything like that. It's for one simple problem. I can't read the dang thing. Now you're probably saying to yourself right now, dude, what are you talking about? It looks fine to me. And that's because you're viewing it here at the perfect camera angle with these lights just inches away. And yeah, it looks great in this kind of light. Well, here's what it looks like in normal lighting, especially down at wrist level. The hands just disappear. They are also skeletonized. They are absolutely tiny and there's no contrast in normal light because there's no reflectivity coming off that blue paint. They're not really blued. It's just an applied blue paint and there's just not enough material to easily glance down and read the time. You got to stare at it. You got to move it around to see the right light and just, you know, it's, it's not a good actual working design of a watch. First thing a watch should do is tell the time. And to me, that means a quick glance, less than a second, you know what time it is. And with this one, you know, you're just, you're hunting around and I wanna to try to fix that. So I've gone through a number of different solutions. My first thought was just polish off the paint and leave them nice and polished and silver. Problem with that is I, I have some watches like that and those hands half the time are also unreadable because they go to a dark non-reflective color dark gray and you end up half the time with the same problem so that was out i wanted to just replace the hands you know get a, a solid set at the very least i like the color blue but it's just too thin well there are no sets for this or there there's no spec for what the actual size is for this particular watch or even the movement it's not just the length you have to worry about, it's the very, very specific size of the holes in the hands. And the spec just isn't out there. I found some data from a couple of people that thought they knew what it probably is, but again, there's no set with all three different sizes. So you'd have to buy three individual hands and bottom line, I'd be spending half what I paid for the watch. Not gonna do it, it's not worth it to me. It, I'd rather just let it sit there and look pretty. So back to the drawing board, what I ended up with thinking is paint them. Not just paint them, but paint them with something with enough viscosity that I can make them solid. Even though they are completely, you know, machined and hollow in the middle, they're just open skeleton structures, except for the second, which is just <laughs> insanely small on its own. I think I found a solution. And that was in my wife's nail polish. And I went through and tested a few of them because some are certainly thinner than others. This was one of the thicker ones and it's also pretty tough. And I wanted it pretty tough because you do have to press those back on and I didn't want to see some cracking right around when I did so. So this is the one I ended up with. The white matches and I'd have a test sample here. The white matches, if I can pick it up, this is one I already painted. Came out pretty nice, huh? It matches the actual white of the watch. So I think white hands, the second may or may not still show up easily, but the hour and minute at least, I think are gonna do very well, especially if I can get it to fill in. And what kind of led me to that idea was the video I just did on the Seiko 5 where I used black paint on the back to fill in two small little holes. And it was just such a tiny fill and such thick viscosity, it did so no problem. So we're gonna try and see if we can do the same thing for this. So I've gotta disassemble this, pop it out, pop off the hands, and I've got a nice little spare 
crown and stem here that I've been using as like a little stand. And then I just slide the hands onto it and paint them that way. And that way nothing is getting on the middle. So the hole isn't getting any smaller. It's really tough. <laughs> and I'm able to paint all the way around and let each one dry individually and then take them off. And that should work. Let's get started. So it looks like this is a back secured with four corner screws. So let's find the right screwdriver. That one's got a little bit of a slop in it, so that's not quite big enough. Let's try the next one here. That's got side slop too. It feels like it's longer. I feel like I'm bottoming out, but it's still not a great fit. Let's see what else we got. All right, that feels a little snugger. It at least feels a little more shallow and the tip isn't quite as pointed. So let's see if we can get this open. Yeah, no problem. That's a good fit. That one, oh, that's wonderful. That one is partially stripped from the factory. <laughs> and it looks like so is this one here. That one looks perfect. Hmm. This may be a non-starter. <laughs> yeah, I am not getting any bite on this head here. Well, crap on a stick. There's Chinese quality for you. Don't know if it's indicative of just Pagani design or just this particular model, just this price point, just this factory, who knows. But yeah, that is, uh, that is not opening with that screwdriver. Let's try another one again. I've got no bite whatsoever. It's just completely rounded out in there. That is not good. Now, if I was working on an engine or car parts or anything like that, I would just use an extractor. <laughs> Obviously not a thing you can do with screws this size. So they're not in there with that much torque. What can I do to get that out? It breaks free really easily. I mean, it's just a couple inch pounds or pound inches, I guess you would say. I'm, I'm old school. I still say foot pounds. I know that it's backwards, but that's just what I was taught. So that's in my brain. Okay, man, there is no head sticking up that is almost flush with the housing around it. It's like they put it in with just too much force or, I mean, I can't imagine they did, but, or they used, I'm gonna tighten this back down, some type of power tool to do it. That's how rounded out it is. I just can't imagine doing it by hand and rounding it out that much because the moment it starts to strip, you would think you would stop or what they could have done is just been in such a hurry and they weren't applying enough downward pressure. Maybe they were using a tiny little power tool and it stripped out that way. That is certainly a possibility. Have to say, I do not like this kind of case design. Give me a regular screw on back any day of the week. Obviously this is the first time I've examined the back of this. <laughs> no experience with these yet. All right, let me figure it out off camera and we'll see what we can do. Well, I'll tell you what, absolutely nothing is working. I started to get just a little bit of bite and just a moment of spin using the largest flathead screwdriver I could, but the metal on the screw just completely gave way. I was putting just, just a slight amount of pressure because I don't want to damage a screwdriver tip for this thing. So, at this point, they are just completely rounded. Nothing will even start on this one here. I mean, it's just, they just spun the tip in there. I have to believe it was some kind of power tool. Absolutely ridiculous quality control. So I'm left with 
No way to extract them. Um, none of the extractors I have are anywhere close to having a bite on their tips that small. <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, these are ridiculous sizes here. So maybe there are certainly watchmaker specific extractors out there. I'm not buying a set just for this project and I don't do it for a living, so it's not worth it to me. My solution, since again, this is just for looks, don't really care too much about wearing it. I'm gonna try just drilling off these two heads. Simple as that. These two are coming out no problem. Luckily they're crosswise, so it's not gonna you know, warp the case. It'll actually screw down fairly flat. Will it maintain its supposed, I don't even believe it, 100 meter water resistance rating? I doubt it, <laughs> but you know, it, it's gonna certainly do well for washing my hands and that's all I'm ever gonna do getting the sweat, maybe a little rain, that's it. I'm, I never swim with my watches no matter what, but especially anything with a leather band. I, I do scuba with one of mine, but not anything like this. So I don't really care what it does to the water resistance rating. It's not gonna screw it up for how I use it. So I'm gonna go out to the garage, grab a tiny, tiny little drill bit and we'll see if we can't just pop these heads off. All right, here's a 1 16th. Let's see how close that is. Well, this is my smallest bit, and it's the same size as the total head, which I guess will work. I don't need to go that large. I just need to get the shaft of it, but beggars can't be choosers. Let's take off the two good ones and see if we can get this case back off. Bits and pieces are popping out. I just don't want them to fly in the watch. So I'm just slowly taking it off. And there we go. The screws left in there. It's a good thing I'm doing this now anyway, because this is one of the upcoming projects I wanted to do on the channel to regulate it. This was very slow across the board in all positions when I did the testing video. So it's a prime candidate for seeing how close we can get it. Should be a fairly simple regulation as far as technical. I just don't have the skills yet to do it, but it's on the list. Oh, there we go. There's that one. But I would have needed to get this off anyway, so I'm glad that I can do it sooner than later. All right, so let me clean this up a little bit again. So now we have to get the crown out. Looks like we have a spacer ring on top of it. That should come out fairly easily, hopefully. Oh, nope. <laughs> the whole thing comes out. All right. So the crown has to come out first. I thought it came out before it because it's actually on top of the stem as it goes through. So let's see here. How does this... Push this back down real quick. How does this release its stem? I'm just looking around for any kind of lever or button, got a screw there. Let's see if anything happens when I pop it out. Does anything appear? No. Usually it's right around the stem. Nothing's moving. All right, so it's probably something static that I can see. Me, no, that's too far away to be a lock screw. Can I see anything on this side that would help? I just see the selector and the spring. Nothing that helps me with what's holding it in. Okay. What else can we see? 
And no, I haven't researched this yet. Just kind of winging it. <laughs> I don't see anything looking down into the side. It's just a regular old hole. Let's see. What else can we see? So we got this screw here, but I really don't think that has anything to do with it. Does that little thing move next to it, or is that just some kind of post stop? That does not move. What's this little thing here? Aha! Uh -huh. That moves. A little tiny post. It's got like a dimple in it, so I'm betting that is the release. Let's push it in. Only one half of the tweezers fits. And pull out. And there we go. Okay, cool. See, I like watches. It's fairly logical. Even if you've never seen it or done anything with it before, you know, you should be able to walk through it. As long as you're not going off false assumptions. That's usually my problem is when I run into something, it's because I've assumed something threw me off everything else. So now let's pop this back out. Set that to the side. And now we've got the culprit. All right, is this, I don't need to take that dial off. I just want to make sure it's in there and not going to pop out on me. Looks like possibly just a friction fit. All right, that's fine. We'll just leave that. Okay. So I can't stop it. That's no big deal. There's no date function. So aligning the hands to anything specific other than themselves makes no difference putting them on. Easy enough. Let's go ahead and pop them off and see about painting. All right, so here's our hands. We've got the blue paint on the top, regular polished metal on the bottoms. Pretty standard stuff. Now I experimented with how thick or thin a coat to put on. And it was kind of a balancing act because getting it real thin, you would think it would go on even, but it would kind of leave streaks and gaps. So I went a little heavy, like there was a little bit of a blob looking on the brush end. So I'm still waiting. I need this to be absolutely as dry as possible so it solidifies in between there. I don't want that dripping or drooping or doing anything. And I can still see there's some gloss, especially down at the end. So it's not quite dry yet. In the meantime, I carefully did the second hand just by gripping the little post in the tweezers and going over it real quick. And then I just cleaned these up with isopropyl alcohol. And I've got that sitting on its bottom Got it nice and even and covered. That was kind of tough because it's so thin that it just grabs onto the nail polish and it wants to almost be like a spider web with moisture, with dew. You know, you, got, you get bubbles of the nail polish. So I ended up having to wait a couple minutes for it to start to dry and then brushing it real quick to kind of even it out. Unless you get within, you know, a couple inches of it with your eyeball it looks perfect so i'm not worried about it anyway we'll let this dry some more and then i'll go ahead and do the minute hand just the same way and then let that dry i think it's been enough time and we should be dry i'm going to carefully take this minute hand off my makeshift stand Set that aside. That worked out pretty well. Let's check out the second hand. Hopefully it's not stuck to my plastic. Cool. Okay. Now let's go ahead and reassemble. I've already cleaned out the inside of the crystal and the case back and the dial just to make sure I didn't put any smudges on there. So we don't have to worry about syncing it to any date change. We're just gonna put on the hands 
as standard. Let's see, I will use these guys here. Now I do need to be careful that I try to pick these up from the sides and not top and bottom like I usually would because I don't want to compress that nail polish. It's not fully set and I don't want to put a mark into it. So I'm going to try to carefully just completely do it from the sides here. Let me get my glasses on. That's better. Now, luckily, I've got pretty steady hands. Watch me jinx myself here. I don't know if this is 100% cured. I have no idea what the time is for something like that. But it looks like it's going to do the job. It filled in between those actual little sides of the hands well. I just tilted it. I actually want to repick that up carefully. Ooh, I got my brass tweezers in. Just to help prevent any kind of scratches on that transparent dial, I'm going to try to grab the base. There we go. Just want to get that off of there and try to get it straight down if possible. So I think that'll be easiest. There we go. That's what I wanted. Now I can very carefully, let's see, which one is the smallest hole here? I haven't figured that out yet. Red. Okay, red is the smallest. And do I want the smallest? No, I don't actually for the hour hand. I want a fairly good size one. Let's see, blues, pretty big, grays in the middle. Well, let's go with the blue. That way, what I want to avoid here is, again, putting a mark into the nail polish because I don't know exactly how set it is at this point. But I just want to get it on. And then once I get it kind of seated on there, I'll look at it from the side to see how level I am. Hopefully this doesn't completely mess up the white around the ring. Okay, a little pop. Oh, cool, it didn't. All right. So let me see how close am I to that deck. I got room to go. All right, so I'm going to push down some more. Now, obviously, I did add some paint to the inside diameter there. It's going to be a little snugger fit than it was, but it should push the paint off. A little bit of movement. There we go. Straight back up. Didn't mark it. That's what I wanted there. All right, let's give the... Let's just put it at uh, 12 o'clock. And then we'll give the minute hand try. Does that move? <laughs> Did I coat totally bugger it up? Let me try with the stem in. Sometimes you can push the hands around, sometimes not. I just don't want to force anything. Yeah, okay, that's just a case where you have to actually spin it. No big deal. All right, there's that. I want to take this back out. Probably just push it with my fingernail because it's such a large protruding post. Push it all the way in, push it down, and back out. Okay, now let's lay that minute hand right on top of that guy. This one might be a little tougher just from that extra paint in the middle. See if I can get it on the post. Mm. I want to grab it right at the tip so I don't hit the other hand with the pointy end of the tweezers. Just realized, I don't think it matters if I actually line these up perfectly or not, because I can adjust the minute hand. So we're going to go off to the side just to be a little bit safer. So 
so I don't poke that thing if I don't have to. Stick this on real quick. Actually, it'd probably be better to use this once I get it over just to hold it in place. Try to seat it in there. Nope. Close, but no cigar. Oop, flipped it over. All right. I just got to get it around the shaft and down in. That extra paint is definitely not making it easy. Let's see if that worked. It did. All right, let me line that minute hand up. Where'd my other tool go? There it is. There we are. All right, now for the second hand. Let's see. Got a stem. Let me make sure these are actually level. Wow, they are. I did it right the first time. <laughs> I think that's the first time I got the hands right on the first time. That's pretty cool. Let's flip this guy over. And hopefully he doesn't flip back around. Cool. Okay, make sure it still works. Hmm, so I got some sticking there from paint on the second hand. So one option would be to just not use the second hand, which I wouldn't mind at all. Because man, even the white paint is really hard to see. It's just so thin. The other hands look great. I know on camera it even looks easy on the second hand, but stepping back here, yeah, I wouldn't mind if that... I might be off center though. Let me take it back out. Just the second hand. Yeah, I don't think I was actually... Eh, I think it is paint. I think it is paint. Because I can see the blobs. I think it's catching on the act. This post, because it has paint on it, is catching on the inside holes of the other hands because they have paint on them. It's just taking up all the tolerance that was there hitting the paint on the inside of the holes. So I very well may just omit the second hand. All right, so that's as clean as it can be. Let's just see if it makes any difference or not. I don't think it will. Oh, I already put a mark in it from grabbing it. You know what? Never mind then. I'm just gonna leave that off. Okay, happy enough with that. That is so much easier to read. I don't need a second hand on this anyway. That is a big improvement. That is just day and night for legibility, for glancing at it. Yeah, totally happy with that. Make sure there's no dust on it. Looks good. And back in you go. That was well worth it. 
especially since it was free. Let's take this guy back out. And put it back in. Probably have to go like this. Make sure you don't have any dust. All right, all that's on the outside. That's good enough. Let's see, go like this. Put this guy away. Get this aligned and back seated. That looks like it's pretty close. Tight fit. I'm just not a fan of these friction fit case designs. All right. That is. Slightly off, just slightly off. I gotta go counterclockwise, just a smidge. I'm just sighting down the hole here, making sure it lines up with the movement. I'm just gonna try to spin this. I mean, like a just a hair. There we go. Perfect. All right, now let's make sure everything still works and we're level. Hmm, doesn't want to go in. Okay, that's strange. All I did is flip it over and it goes right in. But upside down. Oh, now it goes in. That makes no sense. All I did is flip it. It's like there was part of the gear train in there that had to just shift a little bit. That's all it was. <laughs> Seriously, all I did is flip it upside down. Didn't do anything else. All right. Still moving. Yep. Good. All right, let me set that. Just to make sure that everything is actually functioning. And by the time I get this button back up, we should see that minute hand sweeping. And then I'll feel good. <laughs> Okay, we can put the case back halfway apart together, at least. Now, let's see. Well, I guess it doesn't matter which ones I do. I just want to make sure that this is actually clean on the inside. It was smudged on the outside. That's fine. We'll clean that in a bit. Okay. Doesn't matter which way it goes. Yes, it does. So it is not totally ambiguous and popped it in and now our two good screws can go into the two good holes which is this one just gonna lightly seat that and do the other one and again just just an inch of pressure Hardly anything at all. Super, super tiny screws. Bada bing, bada boom. Now, where did I have that clasp? 
I don't remember and it didn't leave a mark yet. So we're just going to guess that it was somewhere in the middle. Here we are. Much, much better. And yep, we've got movement of the hands. Now we can actually read the dang thing. Still looks cool. Blue would have been cooler. If they would have made them solid blue, or if I had a blue that matched the blue indices, it's the only reason I didn't. That would have been cooler. But yeah, happy enough with that. Now it still looks cool in the display, but I can actually wear it when and if I want to. So there you go. If you're looking to do something like this, this is at least one option for you. Let me know if you try and if you've got any buggered screws on your Pagani design. I can't be the only one. <laughs> See you next time.